Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, Olympic gold medalist, Swim Swam co-founder Mel Stewart, and joining us today, very special guest, Olympic champion, world champion. He's got almost 40 international medals, uh, South African legend, Cameron Vanderberg. Hey, how are you guys doing? Great, hey, Coleman. You you didn't drop any of his any of his personal stuff, like the magazine covers. <laughs> how that, how that, many that, magazine that. covers have you been on? Cam? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. I know the most covered one that I um, that I always wanted when I was a young kid was Men's Health. You know, you always like oh, you want to be on the Men's Health cover because all the girls would think it's really cool. And then um, and then it, it's pretty funny because when you actually do eventually get it, you're like. So always so critical of yourself when you look at, you know, like photos, you're like, oh man, I don't look so good. You know, like I wish I looked better or like, <laughs> it's, it's always like human nature, I guess. But uh, yeah. the, the most important thing you have going for you, forget the Olympic medals, just put them aside. It's being GQ's seventh best <laughs> dress, man. <laughs> Only seventh best. Oh man, I, I, I needed up my game. I mean, that was in South Africa. I didn't have access to like the London, um, you know, Harrods, and you know, I, I'm sure I could probably do a bit better if we if we re, re ranked today. I was I wasn't gonna say I was disappointed when I saw seventh best, guest, <laughs> but I was a little disappointed. <laughs> I uh, I um, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess you can't have it all, hey, right? You got you gotta you gotta work on something. So, it, spe- speaking of like uh, being on the cover of Men's Health, I know that's I think all guys. You're right. All guys are like man, that would be cool. Cause that means like I'm ripped and I'm jacked. And I think you're, you're very muscular for a swimmer. You know, you had the breaststroke bod, which I think breaststrokers have the best bodies. I think that's pretty much a fact, but I think you and Petey make everyone else look kind of shrimpy in our sport. And I think, I think it's kind of hurt us. Insecure and shrimpy. <laughs> I think, uh, look, I must be honest, uh, it's, it's kind of funny because when you see yourself on TV, you do look a lot bigger. So, you know, camera angles are pretty, pretty, um, uh, you know, you know, make, make you look pretty good, I must say. But I, I do, you know, think obviously on top of that, it is kind of a function of the sport being obviously pretty power based. And a lot of our training, you know, for me as well, back in the day, I used to spend so much time in the gym and not that I was not spending a lot of time in the pool, but, you know, comparative to the distance guys or the 200 meter guys, it didn't seem a lot. And, you know, uh, that was like back in, oh, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010. So, you know, it was kind of not as seen as, as being like done versus what it is today, which I think definitely it seems the strength training and, and like, you know, uh, like Olympic lifting and power and weights and getting strong actually is not looked down on anymore. Whereas back then it was always that, old school mentality especially in south africa we come from that kind of like hungarian like you know longer is better like you know you can't be too big um you know there were obviously a lot of points where i was a bit too big and it was always like a balance you know towards the end you know towards uh, going into 2012 learning more how to swim the 100 meter um so i kind of came from that bottom up approach you know the 50 up to the 100 versus a lot of guys obviously coming from the 200 down so it's been an interesting journey but um as you mentioned you know it's we obviously have a different body uh body physique which doesn't make it too easy for buying clothes so hence you know gq seventh best probably due to the you know it was difficult i couldn't buy everything it was, it was just too <laughs> tough what's fascinating about your career is that you you started during the super suit era and uh but I don't. I think that, the, and I. I don't know if this works for for South African culture. But it, we know that the super suits worked better for swimmers that we would describe as the bread trucks. Bread <laughs> trucks. <laughs> you understand what? I'm Some swimmers. Yes. I was a bread. I, 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 full disclosure. I was a bread truck. If there had been a super suit back back, you know, years and years ago, Mel Stewart would have benefited really well. But you're you were rock solid super fit and i don't know that uh, i don't think you got as much benefit from the super suit as as most athletes is that a fair is that a fair assessment uh no i don't think so i think it's uh i my first like breakout was what 
2006 Pam Packs and I came stone last. I remember walking out and seeing, seeing at the time, seeing Brendan Hansen and being like, oh my God, this guy is a tank. Like he is like totally square, like a break. It was ridiculous. And then I was seeing, you know, Kiritim and Koske. I'll never forget the first time I saw him. I was, I didn't make a final and Koske was, um, it was before the hundred meter final. And he was like just shaving, like such a gangster in the shower. Like, you know, he just, it's like off the warm-up, shame down. Like, what are you doing? Dude? You know, and uh, I thought that was really cool. Obviously, you know, but you know, bombed out there, and then 2007, you were fortunate enough, a little bit better there. But I picked up a lot of muscle going into 2009, knowing that we had the suits actually, because I knew that it helped a lot. So I think it was 2008, end of Olympics, the jacket came out, and the jacket was like insane. I wasn't I wasn't sponsored by Arena at the time, and actually, funny enough, after uh, 20, 2007. I was like, hey, Irina, you know, like everyone's young. You're trying to get picked up as a sponsor. And they weren't interested in the time. Olympics rolls around, came in ninth. And, uh, and they went on the World Cup and, you know, put on the jacket and just smashed in the world records. And, like, by the, <laughs> by the next couple of days, there was a contract from Arena And, like, you know, hey, man, please, can you, can you wear the suit? But that was the first time that I kind of had that indication of, wow, the suit is pretty intense. Like, um, you know, a realization that you could float. I wasn't in as good of a shape after Olympics and that realization, the realization of you can get to the end of the race, you're pretty tired, but it's, it's going to make you float. So that was like the, aha, uh -huh, uh, you know, I can actually get a lot bigger here, get a lot more powerful. I don't necessarily have to make it to the end of the race. As long as I've got the speed going down, as you said, the truck is coming, you know, you, there's no brakes to stop it kind of thing. So that was the aha moment in which, you know, also at the same time, I think it was obviously it was, was a good indication of why they, they banned it. Pullman is too young to remember, Jacob, but I am oh. not. I was, I, was, <laughs> I was in high I, school. I, 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 I wore it, Jacob. Yeah, but I was on deck at the meets, buddy. I, 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 was, <laughs> I went to world championships in Rome and watched world record after world record after world record. Uh, so the, the big question is, and I should know this, I apologize for not knowing this, what color was your Jacob? Uh, I had so um, crazy colors. <laughs> I, I had a very unflattering um, orange, which for my light skin tone wasn't, I would say, probably the best color. But actually, the question is, do you remember the suit that was before the jacket? It was called Blue 72. I remember Blue 70. Blue 70 was sold Blue by 70, my, there Olympic, we go. my Olympic teammate, Rock Santos, sold Blue 70 for the U.S., the North American market, and nobody was wearing it. He was driving around the country with, with, it, with the Blue 70 in his trunk selling it like a drug it was like man the biggest hack in low picks wasn't it because blue 70 was illegal and it was out there wasn't all the uh like jack it wasn't like going if you picked up the blue 70 and swam at the olympics with the blue 70 that is like was legal doping in certain suit terms if you knew about it and the, the blue 70 was the first one that i picked up after the olympics and uh and then went on to the jacket so um Blue Seventy still got a they stay they they've still got a great business they're still around but you know times are changing. That's mm -hmm. uh, so we'll we'll move off this this whole super suited question. But I want to ask you as somebody who has Olympic medals, international fame, has the and, and is an adult man with the full understanding of what his career was about and of the politics with FINA. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we're going to be moving back to the super suited era? Because we're doing it slowly. Do you think we'll ever get back to where we were in 2009? I think that we should definitely move towards a kind of era where we're evolving the sport again, whether or not it's like full neoprene, which is obviously, I think that was like the material was the thing. It wasn't necessarily the, the size of the suit, you know, like going up. And I think, you know, coming from a, like I've always had more of a commercial mind in terms of like, I, I love to know how things work, the numbers of things, you know, like I get frustrated how, you know, the, the bureaucrats and how things are done, but you know, it's, it's a, the mate, you know, if you want swimming to go forward to or be, still be around, you know, kind of thing, you, you, I think you do need to bring back more covering for the men and being able to customize and do certain things and sell sponsorship space. And I mean, guys, it's fundamental, like you know, it's not even rocket science kind of thing, but uh, we definitely do, I think, need to get into that. that, that, that really. Spoken as a true man, a captain of finance. We'll get into finance later if you're a finance <laughs> nerd. For now, now we're going to, Coleman's going to swim nerd it up for us. Go ahead, buddy. Well, well before, before we get to, well, I guess we're already in swimming. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what I want to talk about a little later, but 
let's swim nerd it up. Um, you know, you mentioned 2008 and then you went on to smash the world cup. Um, 2009, your first world championships where you were a world champion. Um, and were you, so were you wearing Jacob or arena by then? I was wearing arena by then signed, signed the arena contract just after world cup 2008. Okay. And then, so did, did it make a huge difference? Did, is that why you got bronze in the hundred breasts where you've won in a Jacob or was, 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 uh, you know, what, what, what was the difference and what was the mindset heading into that meet? No, the, the difference definitely was actually, uh, I, I, uh, uh, I had a bad train period. Actually, I end of 2008, I left, I had a coach in South Africa, Dirk Langer, who then when he left South Africa, I then went to train actually with Kinojima's coach in Japan. So I was with uh, Nari for about six months or so, which great learning experience, but um, not designed for my body. Like, as we mentioned, I'm, I'm power based, you know, big power strength. And they were obviously trying to adapt the program, but it was very, it was very different. So I came from this 200 side. I lost, man. I went from like 90 kilos to 78. It was like I was tiny. And I uh, went to World Mar Nostrum 2009, made the B final. I was like, whoa, you know, like what's going on here? And uh, that was like sort of the clicking point. Um, you know, I said thanks, Nori, for everything. You know, and I did learn a lot technically and a lot about, you know, maturity, how to swim a race better, how to train, obviously, for the 100, for the 200 kind of. But brought it very, then very quickly back to what I was doing previously and, and actually the muscle memory kicked in. So I had this front hand speed that I had, you know, historically, but I had been doing a lot of long distance training, which then filtered through to the hundred meters, which did help. Um, and then subsequently then on, went on 2011, sorry, 2010, 2011, 2012. So it was like this four year period of, you know, got Olympic 2008. I was like, well, I'm not going to come out again. This is not what I want. And, uh, so then it initiated the, 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 the change to get. So it was, it was a four year, four year in the making to get to the Olympic gold. Yeah. And so, so then you, you get that Olympic gold. Um, and again, you talked about this transitions for your period. What about that next quad? You know, I mean, you had what, 10 years where you were winning consistently winning medals at, at the, at the top. Um, did you ever, did you ever, yeah, again, switch up that training from, from just what you were used to in South Africa. Did you have another change in, in that next quad from 13 to 16? Uh, no, and, and I think there was a problem was that I, I, I had that, uh, you know, still with the same coach and we had a lot of success together, but just before Olympics, um, you know, body was just getting old and I was getting beaten up and I wasn't able to do the same sets that I was when I was 24, 23. And, uh, man, it's a real thing. Like in swimming, you're like, you hit 24, 25 and there's something like, Girl, it's like, hey, you're not 23 anymore. It's literally from one year to the next. Everybody feels it. Like, I always ask everyone, like, how's it go? And, um, you know, the coach and I, we just sort of didn't see eye to eye. And, and I eventually even rocked up to 2016 just from, like, injuries, from overtraining, being fatigued, you know, like, didn't see eye to eye. Anyway, so we went on our separate paths. And um, I met up with James Gibson. It was, like, one of the most amazing experiences the last two years because, you know, I was knew that I was tapering down. I wasn't, you know, I was getting into the finance, you know, I was looking, looking to, 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 you know, to, to find this next chapter in my life that I wanted to try and um, become the world's best in. And uh, James understood that. He understood what it felt like being an older athlete and how to train that. He understood my strengths and my weaknesses. He understood me uh, emotionally as well. Like what do I need, what do I not need. You know, I'm not a baby athlete anymore. Like when you're at the meets, what, you know, you, give you a space when you do, when you're not, when, and then he's absolutely incredible with that. I must be honest. So that, that last period, I wish that I had picked it up just before Olympics, like slightly earlier. Maybe if I had more time in terms of I mean, you know, the things we were doing the last two years, I mean, we rocked up at uh, Commonwealth games and I was training like once a day, you know, like it was just, it was one like things that you wouldn't think of, or even towards, uh, you know, 2018 when I retired I was training like three times a week uh, on the 25 meter pool like for 20 30 minutes but just because he knew how to get the most out of me because of the age and that um, muscle memory and how to bring it out is an incredible coach and I really thoroughly enjoyed his work and, and for someone as thick as you are you're a thick man I'm just gonna say it 
<laughs> it's uh, it, it's a you know, when talking to the elite coaches in the United, in the United States, uh, I, Mike, I was coached by David Marsh, and Marsh, uh, I don't know if do you know Marsh? You have a relationship with David Marsh? Yeah, David, I, I David's, yeah, David's like uh, David. David said, "Look, if you if you've done your time in swimming and you get to the elite level, he's like, you know, I'm just I just want to make you physically fit and strong, and he goes, we're doing way too much work." So all my pros, all my old athletes have done the job and it goes, I'm just making their core super strong so that they can mm. pop and they have fast hand speed and foot speed. But it's a, does, I, I wonder, do you, do you wonder personally if you had, if you had adopted these techniques from Gibson earlier, if you'd mm-hmm. have had some, you would have reached some new benchmarks, new, new levels, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, you always like to believe in yourself. I, I, I can't take anything away. I think Adam swims the Olympics. I mean, you know, it's incredible. To be honest, absolutely incredible. But seven, I, I don't think that I probably would have got there. Would I have done a personal best? I think so. Yes, um, probably would have been better. Uh, I would like to have gone fifty-seven if I could. Fifty-seven low. I mean, I'm not sure, but you never know if you got the opportunity. But um, I do wish that I did, and I do agree with you and or him, and you know, a lot of a lot of that and that. A lot of guys are being overtrained towards the end of their careers. And that's why I said there's a kind of weird period, 24, 25, 26. Like it's like a, it's like a weird thing just happens. And uh, it's like a second puberty almost. And you, But now you're like kind of going down. It's weird. And uh, you know, I think in that period, if, if coaches can have that realization and start looking after the athletes a bit better, um, you know, it's also from a mental point. Like it's, it's you know, like I wrote up in 2016 and I was not enjoying – Olympic racing just mentally like never mind physically and that also I think puts a lot of athletes out of the sport because they get to that point where you know I was fortunate I was able to get to the games I was still able to get on the podium but if you're you know not able to support yourself financially and do well enough like and you're not enjoying it mentally either then what's the point anymore like you know at that point for me it was a bit of a means to an end so so it's it's spot on and I think people are definitely moving that way. You know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, in general, the, the sport is changing up completely. We obviously see as, you, like we said, I mean, guys are coming more from 50 up to 100. It's not coming from 200 down. And that's just a function of understanding that, that how to train better, how to be faster, you know, twitch more and, and uh, how to use the body better. Yeah. You went to the Olympics in, in, in 16 and you got, you, you picked up silver. Um, I, when I went from 23 to 27, uh, and I experienced exactly what you're talking about, I went to two Olympic trials and got third. So, <laughs> so that, I'll trade you, buddy. I'll trade, I'll trade my experience and I'll take the silver. Yeah. It's, you it's, know, that being said, that being said, I, I, I can definitely say that I'm, I've been very fortunate because swimming for South Africa, making the team is a lot easier than being in the U S and I would say a few seasons, I probably might not have arrived at the trials in i mean i always swam in season april i was like nowhere compared to i knew what like my final form would be end of the season and uh on a, a couple of occasions i probably wouldn't have made the team because it's quite tough for you guys so uh, you know your situation is very different and very difficult very compassionate and humble of you but not true <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but not true no the, your performance yeah, i have to say that the performance in 16 was was, was impressive and, 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 I, and I'm, I'm out of curiosity, I think that we're all, you know, we have, I think that Adam Peaty is an outlier. Uh, I think he's an outlier like uh, Phelps, Hose, mm-hmm. Manoka Tinka Hosu. Mm-hmm. I think he's an outlier in, in terms of, there, he's, he's a once in a generation swimmer. And I'm kind of, you know, how do you feel about your career? You, you've got your time, you own your history, but you're also overlap with his history. And, you know, is that meaningful for you? Are you guys buddies? Do you, is that something you consider? It is, it is. You know, I, I, I enjoyed the, the ride, you know, I enjoyed the race. Like, it was like, you know, some of the best races that I will remember. You know, like, uh, one, you know, weird enough, like Commonwealth Games beating him in the 50 breasts. Like, just, like, man, you know, you know it was a thing. Like, you, you had to be there in the, in the crowd at the time, you know, like, like, the whole crowd was just like, <gasps> what's going on? You know, the whole South Africa team just losing their, you know, the marbles going absolutely nuts. I mean, you saw, I mean, I celebrated more than my 100 meter uh, Olympic gold medal on the lane because I, some of the coolest photos that I have are from, 
from that, that, that victory. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's cool, you know, like I, I wouldn't have it any other way in terms of, you know, you get complacent. I think if you're just, if I look at it realistically, if I didn't have him, you know, I realistically could have won what probably outside of like spring of 2013, I could have won 20, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016, probably might have, you know, gone on 17, 18. I don't know, like how things would have changed, but it's, uh, yeah, hindsight's perfect vision. I, I don't know. I, I I loved him, man. It was really incredible. Incredible to with, and he's a great guy. Like we, we have a good relationship now, especially I think after after um, Commonwealth Games. You know, it was like a kind of a nice like, you know, hey, old man can still do it. Like still around, still here. You know, like it was I've always nice. been jealous of the Commonwealth Games because it's a in the United States in the in the seventies and eighties we had the Pan American Games. The yes. American Games was celebrated. It was network television. It was it was a moment in time where you got as much attention in terms of media and, and appreciation as an Olympics, but it was mm. Pan American Games. Mm. And now, then it became Pan Pacific Games, and it wasn't the same. But Commonwealth Games, people go bananas for the Commonwealth Games. And yes. that is something that you can, it's, it's a, you can hang your hat on it. It's 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 something that it's a it's a real feather in your cap, and uh, so I'm yeah. jealous. I just, just want to say I'm jealous of you. It makes me angry. You know, it, and it was nice because at least at the Commonwealth, it's it's you know it was still Adam and myself. It, you know, if I can say you know the top two swimmers in Bershwick at that time, I, you know maybe I'm arrogant to say that, but in that uh, time frame, it was nice because we could go to the Commonwealth Games. It was still the showdown, as if. It, it would have been at the Olympics as if it would have been at the World Champs. And South Africa saw it the same way. People, you know, like celebrate as if it's the Olympic Games. They go crazy. And we all know, you know, it's, swimming is that sport that matters once every four years, in, in a sense, to the whole world. And for South Africa, it mattered once every two years, once at the Commonwealth Games and once at the, the, uh, the Olympic Games. It's pretty cool. When I, when I see you, I think, man, this is a guy that was built for ISL. <laughs> it's built for ISL. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And you and you had a little collaboration with them in the in the beginning, but you're you're an adult. You got you're you're moving into your own career. But just as as somebody who's who's watched last season with your history, uh, you know, what do you think? What do you, how, how was the first season? Yeah, it was it was cool. It was very sad that I sort of yeah finished off at the wrong time. You know, I I used to love the World Cup because I was again I was built for it. You know, it was like a you come in, you do the work. You know. I, do a lot of gym. Um, the racing makes you like you race into fitness, which is great, and uh, that's you know, I used to love that. Um, so having that that ISL like format that was so perfectly fitted up for me, I think it was a bit of a shame that I missed it. But I think the the, the, the environment for the summers is cool. It's, it's a it's, it's a first iteration, I guess we can say. So there's a lot of things that will still improve, and you can even see from the first one that was uh, the first. Uh, match you know that they had to so the last you could see uh, the things were changing as they were going on in the graphics on the tv and the way that they set up things um so it's good to see that they are very active and taking suggestions and seeing what works for the athletes and that's what's really cool it's not the bureaucratic like you will do this this is good for us this is good for our sponsors so whether or not that changes as things go down because we all know that everything you know, it's, there's no free lunch and it, there has to be some money made so when the whole season is not underwritten by one person and, and um, uh, you know, that those politics do come into play. But I do think that because they've started out so far, let's call it right. And, you know, Fina is so far left, it's still going to be a win in terms that we can still get to, to, to a better place. Coleman, can I ask one more question? Yeah. I'm going to ask Coleman a question. Coleman, yeah. this is just my opinion. I think that Cam should, should, should be lifting heavy. And he should just be a ringer for the 50 breaststroke. <laughs> Somebody else brings him in on the team. He just shows up on deck, a surprise. <laughs> he'll, he'll be the blind, the blind guy. And then he'll just, you'll just, here's the thing. You could probably take Petey. I'm telling you. He's going he's to he's gonna show up at one of these matches tired. You can get him again. I've, I've, had, I've, had, I've had a few offers of that. You, you, you say that, but uh, there's, there's been a few offers on the table from a couple of the teams looking at exactly that. So, I mean, obviously my – my uh, loyalty, if I ever had to do that, does lie with uh, with that, with um, James, obviously, and, and the, the team, so energy. But 
We'll see. I was, I was just telling my wife the other day, it's, it's uh, you know, lockdown has been such a crazy time for everyone, obviously. And, you know, this whole work from home thing is like so different. But the beauty about it is that you have so much time for yourself. You're managing your own time. And to a point, there's no reason that I can't, you know, get out in the morning, go swim, go to some lifts, you know, and casually, casually, okay, I'm saying it casually, race every now and then just for the thrill. No comebacks, no, uh, you know, I'm announcing anything, but it's, uh, it's, it's a cool thrill to have. Just you know, get up a doodle dirty fifty. Cam's training again. Just put it out there. We're going to start the rumor. <laughs> no, so no. here's the thing. Col- Coleman wanted to get it. The reason why we've been trying to get you on for a while, and Coleman's like, man, it's we were reporting on it, but uh, you you got COVID. So yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell tell yeah. us that. Somebody who has a who has a world class elite physique, health history. How did this virus? How did the how did the uh, the, cor- the coronavirus hit you? Yeah, we had, you know, it hits, uh, I mean, we've all seen the reports, it's strange, you know, like some guys get hit super hard, some guys don't. So it seems that my wife and I got hit really hard here in, in the UK. We were like one of the first also to catch. So you were like, do I have it? Do I not? You know, like these symptoms are coming on. You're not really sure what's going on. Um, you know, like uh, the, 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 um, what what I can compare it to, like as a flu, it's insanely tough. It's a really difficult flu, especially because the duration is so long. You know, fever goes on forever. And at that, that moment when you're in the fever, that's when you start losing, like you lose the muscle mass. And for me, also a guy that I've got a low body um, percentage, you know, in fat and a lot of muscle, I lose muscle very quickly. So I, I lost like oh, five, six kilos in, in like, Four five days when the fever came on, it was it was nuts. Um, and then the recovery after that, you you're always constantly tired, which was really terrible. And that you know you wanna, as an athlete, also it's like you you know we all know we get sick, you get the flu. You know you take a couple of days off, you come back in, you do a very easy swimming, very light. You know you just and this was like you know I go out, I just do a walk around the block, come back, like almost collapse, like you're dead, dead, dead tired. So you had a very tough period of the of the fever you know the first initial parts are not too bad the chest pain for me was not too bad the fever was really dramatic um and then the recovery process took long i mean the weird things of like losing the smell and and you know that kind of like phantom smells are are, um are okay to deal with but just uh just very weird disease to catch yeah coleman are you in this yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I'll talk to him for five hours if you let me. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, go ahead. We're down to seven minutes. Coleman, jump in here. <laughs> well, I, f- I figured you want to talk finance, but I mean, one, one more COVID question. Um, you know, I, I know. Sorry, you were, you were one of the first to get it. You know, how, how long did you say that whole recovery process lasted? You know, like when, when did you start feeling like a human being again? So I think early symptoms were it took about say three days. Then the fever for me was like four days. So let's say you know, going up to about just over a week. Then it was a good solid like say two weeks of of that like fatigue of you know trying to get trying to get back up and just like getting back knocked back down again. And uh, that took about two weeks. The so total process three weeks. Um, after the second week, that's when I like. You, you realize that you lost your smell and taste completely, um, which is still not back. Like weird enough, smell comes and goes. But uh, and I get the weirdest phantom smells. Like everything smells like onion. It's like terrible. So uh, yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a frustrating frustrating thing to go through. It. And I think uh, yeah, you know, obviously I'm out the other side and I'm healthy and I'm good. But, uh, you know, for people that are not in a good shape on their lungs and, and, uh, you know, that you have a lot of underlying issues, I think it can, yeah, I mean, it's, it's scary. Very, very, very scary. I mean, there was like, say that period of four days of the fever, that was the absolute worst for me. We're down to five minutes, but it's it, just to put a, put a, put a fine point on this. If you are an elite athlete and you get this, I mean, you understand like what your recovery period is, you know, how, would you be able to do, would you be able to be back at workout hundred percent a month later? No. Months later? Oh yeah. That's so, so the whole, the whole, like, so I, I wrote that tweet, which I got picked up, you know, all it was crazy around the world. Like CNN, BBC, all these guys were, were ringing in. Was I, I, 
like never wanted to hear manga. It was like that whole process of saying like, I know athletes, you know, we're in Olympic cycle. You are in the shape. You've, you've done cycle one, or maybe it's end of cycle two. You know, you, you get this disease now, you're out for like a month. You lose, you know, you're going to lose a whole cycle. Like you're going to lose like say three months of training because you just lose so much muscle um, tone and, and fitness. If you caught that closer to the games, you know, it was, it was like a game theory. Do you catch it now? Uh, and and then try train. Do you try, you know, then prevent, but then you catch it close to the games, you're done. Like that's it. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 I'm happy that the guys obviously postponed. I think it was the right thing to do in the end. You know, I mean that also difficult obviously for all athletes and different aspects of different ages and but uh yeah, it's just a bad time for this thing to come around. That's sobering to hear and, and scary. Sorry, come what were you gonna say? No, I'm I'm, I'm good. You're good. Yeah. It's, we're down to four minutes and I just, I, I appreciate you sharing that about COVID. I know that it was a huge story. Also, I know that you're very busy and you've been tough to get on the, uh, on, on podcast no, no. because you are an analyst for a hedge fund on your path to becoming a billionaire. Are you a billionaire <laughs> yet? No, I, uh, I'm not a billionaire yet. <laughs> cause we want you, cause we we're waiting for you to buy swim swam at 10 times earnings. You're okay. Waiting for that offer. Waiting for that offer. <laughs> You're just an Olympic champion, flush with cash. Sounds so it, sounds good. It's uh, but yeah, no, it's with the, there's uh, there are a lot of, there are a lot of swimmers in finance. Uh, there are a lot of swimmers in private equity. There's uh, mm-hmm. with Masters Capital. He's got mm-hmm. 1.8 billion under management out of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so it's 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 kind of a thing, and it's uh, you're down to three minutes. Tell us what your the world of finance is like, and and. Jo- Joseph Schooling should work for you. He wants to go into this. <laughs> yeah, I think some of us are good at finance because we are, we know how to work hard, you know, discipline, all, you know, all the different things you can go on. But I think the main thing that we are good at is, um, is risk, you know, like taking chances, taking opportunities, like taking the pressure, you know, um, when it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, when, when you're putting trades on, you're obviously getting instant feedback. Are you right? Are you wrong? Uh, was it a good trade? Was it not? How do you size it? Um, it's it's a real adrenaline adrenaline rush, and the constant feedback feedback loop. Also, it's like ranking, like swimming. You're the best. You're second best. You're third. You're making money. And I think that the the that like mental capacity that we've had, or the maturity from from taking you know wins taking losses uh knowing how to compose yourself that's what enables us to be good because i think you know at the end of the day finance you know it's 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 difficult when you start because it sounds so complicated and you know all these different uh ratios and variables and you know and it takes you you know about a year and you get into it and you learn you know, the, the, the lingo and you know what you need to know but um that ability to generate money out of pressure and and maintain your composure that is the most difficult thing in the world so that's why, you know, there's only a couple of guys that are really good at it. And there's a lot of guys that are, as they call it, like uh, closet indexes. They just kind of follow, follow the market and they don't really, really do anything. We're down to like 30 seconds. Do you have to be an Olympic champion, an Olympic butt brother for you to mentor any, any of your fellow folks moving <laughs> into finance? No, no, no. Actually, I would love to. I think it's an amazing thing. And, you know, I, it's, it seems quite daunting from the outside and how do you get into it. But, um, I mean, I would love to, to help out. Obviously, if anybody got any questions, just shoot me an email or shoot me a message and I'll be more than willing to help out. Will you come back on the podcast? Yeah, definitely. It sounds like we'll have to schedule an hour in next time. It seems uh, we're, uh, we've got some, we've got some good chats. So definitely. I mean, I've always obviously known of you guys and followed you guys from awesome swam. So uh, great to finally be, uh, shall we say live and in on the, uh, on the interweb with you. You've been listening to the swim swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.